in the beginning of a time, which was 1985, I didn't have all of the creativity tools that I wanted. I saw computers, but you couldn't touch them. They were, they were like, oh, they were, you had to learn how to program to touch them. And so the ultimate creative fusion time bomb it blew up and it was the introduction of the laser writer and postscript, and then Photoshop, Illustrator. So now artists had all of these incredible tools and it, there was an explosion of publishing. And it was like the ocean. It came in, washed over all the designers and they drifted into the ocean and became fish. I want you all to stand up and celebrate creativity! Well, I have another theory about trust with Steve, and that is that um, in my own reading and learning about human behavior and interaction with people, I have a phrase that sort of says, hurt people hurt people. And so Steve, for me, as an orphan from his living parents, separated from his biological sister, starts a company, needs to find a way to communicate his emotion, creates machines that are able to be utilized by mere mortals, that are not about communicating about numbers and spreadsheets, they're about communicating the senses and the artistic truth of the individual. It's almost as if these people have a chance to scream their truth through these amazingly easy to use tools based on some need inside of him to tell the truth emotionally that somehow he may have gotten to before he died, I don't know. He gets to Apple and he hires somebody based on what he believes is the right thing to do, which is John Scully for consumer marketing reasons. He wants somebody to help him break through. So technology from Apple's not just technology. And then, boom, he gets outed by the man he hires from the company he found. So that's two orphan experiences. One from his biological family and one from his own company. So by that time, at less than 40 years of age, there's no way in the world that man's going to trust easily. This was in the first couple of months I was at Next, and he had Bill Gates come in and his entourage, and we demoed the Next machine. And you know, it was we were actually still simulating the Next software on a Sun workstation. And we went back up to the boardroom, and there I was. You know, there's Steve Jobs on one end of the table and Bill Gates on the other. Steve says, so Bill, what do you think? You know, and he says, it's great, isn't it? And Bill's like, yeah, it's great. You made a lot of money with the Macintosh. Don't you want to do it? No, it's great, it's great. But, and, and you could just see Steve was like disappointed that Bill didn't want to just jump in. He said, why? And you could tell it was really bothering him. He said, well, it doesn't have an install base yet. But don't you like it? Yeah, I like it, but... And, and on one end, there's a, I realized that he was just a product guy. He built things that were beautiful. And, and Bill was building a business. And he was running the numbers in his head. And it was a whole different mentality. And I think there's probably, you know, has been respect between the two of them. They've done other stuff together, but they were wired very differently. And I think the genius of Steve was that he never stopped to do the business case. You know, I think intuitively he got better and better at that over time. But it was making things that were beautiful that that drove him. I didn't know it at the time, but it was the it was the most incredible professional experience of my life. And you know, with 30 people, you know, we built an operating system and a bunch of applications and an application kit. I mean, it was miraculous, 30. The 1.0 Next machine had 30 programmers. My relationship with Steve was actually very good. Um, he was very kind to me. 
Um, I don't know why that was, because I've seen him be very tough on other people. I remember once at uh, one of the Chaminade offsites that we had, you know, I had just made a presentation about what we were doing to recruit developers. And it was pretty good. You know, it was the best I could do at you know, that age, you know, given the experience that I had. And afterwards, he walks me outside, and we sit down on the curb. He said, so what do you think about that? I said, I, th I thought it went pretty well. He goes, well, I think it went pretty well. But you know, you should always be thinking about what you're asking for from the people that you're presenting to. What do you want them to do for you as a result of this talk? And I thought, absolutely right. Changed my life. But it was that sort of coach thing that you never hear about Steve being. And it was, that was a gift. He didn't have to do that. I'm, I'm missing him. You know, just knowing he's, I still have dreams about him. I still have dreams over the last 10 years about him asking me to come back to work with him some more. It, it had touched me that, that deeply. And I, I didn't, don't know why. I've never had that experience with really anyone else. I think knowing Steve, he would, the, thing, the, the thing he most hate are people that feel sorry for themselves. He wouldn't want someone, so, so he make really, really harsh comment. But if you see you just kind of, you know, if you feel bad about it, he wouldn't like it because he felt that his comment is not critical. His comment is to make you better. You make the thing better. So if you dwell on it, first of all, he didn't, there's no effect because what he wanted to do is to make it better. If you dwell on it, dwell on the, the, the misery, it wouldn't make you better. So, so that's why I thought, you know, the sadness that he passed, you know, we, sh we shouldn't have to dwell on it. We should just turn it into something you make, you know, make yourself better. I've been an entrepreneur longer than I was ever a CEO of, of a major corporation. And yet I've been humbled, you know, even more times. And uh, I've had my face smeared in the dirt. Uh, I, kn I know what it feels like to uh, be really down, and I know what it feels like to climb your way back up again. Never, ever give up.